dear researcher. Good afternoon. I'm, my name is Farah. Mm, I'm PhD researcher in the Loises lab. And today uh, we have decided to uh, introduce our project name. It's tweet filtering. Actually, it belongs to eDrop Trends project. Uh, eDrop uh, e Trends project is a trending, a trending, a trending social media analysis uh, to monitor cannabis and synthetic cannabinoid use. So because of that, uh, um, we have created uh, different classes of cannabis. cannabis. So uh, we have started getting the data since September. So as you can see here, uh, we have got few data, which all of them is not useful for us, but most of them, we cannot say that which part is useful and which part. We have a lot of noise, we have a uh, disambiguation problem. So by having this uh, problem in mind, we came to this project to find out that what we can do uh, for this project. Uh, I would like to show you one example here, which is now a famous example, is the spice. So we have I have went through a lot of data, uh, it was very difficult to find one relevant and uh, another which is not relevant and one of them which I cannot say that is it really what talking about what. So I took uh, three examples here and uh, you will see that what is the problem of this example. Thanks Farah. So uh, my name is Vaikun, uh, I just uh, registered for my class this fall 2014. And, uh, as far as this, uh, our problem is concerned, uh, for example, if we take the uh, drug spice, uh, we know that it's a drug from a, a drug point, a point of view perspective. So if I just search for the keyword spice and uh, the tweets which are, which are just uh, getting listed out are, for example, uh, my name is uh, spice, that's one tweet, and the other name is uh, I will be a smoking, I will be smoking spice. So which is relevant here, uh, my name is Spice is irrelevant here. So that's the case where I just filter out the irrelevant uh, tweet and just get the relevant tweet. So that's what uh, we do here. Uh, the number of irrelevant tweets we get, the faultier the uh, filtration is. So that's how we just model the uh, our algorithm. And my <coughs> name is Adesh and we for in order to solve this problem, we'll be taking a machine learning approach, and uh, we be it's a classification problem. Whether given a tweet, whether it is relevant or not, is a classification problem. So what we're gonna do is each of us is gonna train, select a one classifier edge, and train the classifier and <coughs> uh, get the result out of it, and, like evaluate the result, precision recall, and all. Each of you have a common uh, training set. Uh, yeah. Common training set. Yeah, common training set. We'll take a common training set and each individual because we wanted to do as an evaluation thing. We, eval we wanted to do it as an evaluation thing. A training set, really? How much work is there? Yeah, I, uh, we're planning to take thousand. Yeah, but uh, once you have training set, there isn't much work to do cl training classifier. It is just the big. We there are we can do a lot of into it like. For example, like refer co -ref, not co reference exactly, but latent identity recognition, something of that sort, can be embedded into it if there is. So bring in high precision into it. Sir. No, no. I'm saying if you are, you have a training set, then you are using the same training set for training three classifiers. That second step of training the classifier is not much work at all because you use an existing tool. Uh, we actually. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I corrected here. Yeah, just a few points, but sorry. Uh, but actually, here I got good selection because we will not have common train, uh, train model. So we will, uh, from the machine learning Weka uh, tools, we will train the model, but train cannot exactly be one common train. So we can have individual one and we can bring it up which one is better. Sure, Training a classifier is not a big deal if you already have training set. So what I'm saying is there's hardly any work involved in doing this project. It's not a project, you know. It's just nothing that, you know, even 
compared to the software development work that other good projects will do, this is a trivial amount of work. The hard work is really getting the tra you know, training set. Um, a thousand training set, if you are doing it with consensus, that's what? You can knock it off in less than a day. So, and the pacifier training is what? A few hours? Yes. So, no, what is that? Uh, this is just the outline what we were trying to put out. And one thing, one thing that came came to our mind was Sujan's work, late in the end mm -hmm. There is a possibility. There is, I don't know how much possibility there is mm -hmm. in a tweet mm -hmm. in referring to a late identity. Mm -hmm. But if it is we can if we can plug in that thing mm -hmm. into the tweet then mm -hmm. so this will be a very good project. Did you get any ideas from the discussions earlier morning? Today, today morning? I uh, for the model training? Oh, this morning I made some comments about uh, improving the results. We do not add anything today. This yeah. one was one so, day, so day before. You know, I, you talked about, for example, there will be action words that are right in the tweets. I will mean, be drinking, you know, or visiting. Mm -hmm. That's not the thing that I use in the loan to using the drug. Mm -hmm. But smoking is something is else, you know. Excuse me, this is what I'm going to explain here. Mm -hmm. In a sentence that which we actually, uh, I did not go to that. Let's say spices is in a sentence, but we, according to the spice, we have two other words which is related to this, and it shows that it's related to our piece, which is cannabis. Okay, mm -hmm. but if we remove the spice, it still we have some keys that it shows that it's related to the cannabis. So we can uh, we can uh, bring it up that which which data is relevant and which one is not. So let's say as you said, the smoke. So if we have a smoke, we have something other things related to the, the spice, so <coughs> which is referring to drugs. So this is our data. If it's not, so because uh, let's say pumpkin <coughs> latte uh, spice. So that is, if we remove the spice, pumpkin and latte is not related to the cannabis. So that is not our sentence. So somehow we would like to uh, uh, identify the sentence here in the. Um, Data. So, so we will bring it up that what is What set of techniques are these called? Actually, we have, because we are in a building, a lot of things we have in mind. So this is actually, everybody is uh, looking for the solution for it. But what we have to do up to now, we have decided to a uh, few lecture online and even uh, we have started to go to machine learning pr uh, programs. And from there, are there supervisors better or unsupervised technique? So from that, we will get a model, an algorithm that can answer this problem. So we are looking for that. The point I'm getting to is, did anybody get to you know, listen what I'm getting to? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've used what, what upper training, and it's not, it's not an extremely intensive process. Yeah. I mean, you, you what that, what I was trying to say is that machine <coughs> learning is a part of the solution you need to think about uh, what I'm trying to get to is uh, you need to think about linguistic rules and pattern based solution also as a complement and you need to think about um, the, the semantic uh, approaches whereby when the words are used in a particular context so if there happens to be a drug ontology let's say and um, in that a, a drug ontology there is a term spice and the ontology, when you describe the spice as a, uh, a type of uh, you know, synthetic cannabinoid, then uh, there is a particular context that is created by that. And you can leverage that context to try and understand whether that particular use is um, used in the, um, uh, in, in the right context, in the context of drug versus something else. <coughs> so um, this is where you know, uh, use of background knowledge uh, may be very relevant. So I'll show you an example of um, work. So here is a paper that we had published a while ago. <coughs> it's called Semantic Enhancement Engine. Okay, and um, excuse, uh, excuse me, we're not seeing it. 
So, so I, uh, uh, this is the um, what we use. Um, how am I going to go up? Okay, and here uh, you look at this um, workflow. Right, you have text. You do classification. The classification gives you the context in which that word might be used. Okay, so um, uh, there may be um, uh, the word. In, the word may be Madonna, whether the Madonna is used in the movie context or in the music context. That would allow you to disambiguate some things like that. Then you have domain specific metadata extraction, uh, which uses ontology, and then some other stuff, which probably are not that relevant to you. But let me show you um, what goes in there. So, this thing you are aware of, right? You guys have all looked at uh, the uh, uh, architecture we had for the um, um, system that we build at Tali and Vocate and Symagics, right? And what happens here is that you have, uh, just so that you are aware of, so uh, once again you have ability to create the knowledge base. At the end I have a knowledge base which I, is today people talk about Google Knowledge Graph. I have the knowledge base, right? If you looked at my um, um, uh, you know, blog. What was one of the interest comment I made about it? Tell me, uh, I made some comment about um, uh, the uh, the process of uh, creation of Google Knowledge Graph versus uh, the process of creation of uh, our ontology or our knowledge model or I mean, knowledge base, which ultimately you know, and one model is same as ontology. So, what was the what was the distinction? So is that where you were talking about some of the Google stuff was still done by hand as opposed to all automatic? Uh, the, I, it's there I talked about that too, uh, but uh, this was the, the domain specific, like you went to NFL websites to get the NFL knowledge. You went to, you, so you went to, to places where you knew the knowledge would be about a certain con in a certain context to get the knowledge. Right. So, 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 but much of the knowledge, so these knowledge extractors, knowledge extractor agent, you see this? This were some of uh, uh, programs that were created from using a widget, uh, some sort of tools, where I basically had technology there where I would, uh, for the syntactic extraction aspect, where what part of, um, let's say, page has a table. A table has a very, you know, relatively structured information in an unstructured form because it's on a page in HTML. To get the uh, or semi structure form, I would say. So, to, so I would say that uh, you know this column is name of a player. This column is uh, you know uh, some statistics. All right. So I for that I would use regular expression. Right on an HTML page. Right? But the point is that uh, most of the information that I was getting is open source web and uh, you know uh, reference uh, tables. I gave some examples of open source web. Can you recall? <coughs> what is the example I gave for financial? Uh, World Bank. Bank. World Bank. Mm -hmm. Who else? Who would say that? Come on, guys. What What is the example I gave for music? music. 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 I said today's music range. What was the time at that? What was it called that time? Sound index. BBC sound index. All music. Yeah. All music? Why are you guys? Come on. Right? What was the example? What was the third example given there? <coughs> I give example of music. I give example of um, uh, financial uh, markets uh, part of the ontology. What was the third example I gave? Sports. Sports? Uh, no, sports example I had given. Um, uh, I think in class, what was the example I gave in my write-up, in the blog? Right? Video. Movies? Oh. IMDb? Video. Yeah? So those are the sites that we, you know, from which we got the information. In fact, in some times, from the same, for the same domain, I got information from multiple sites. sites. And they had overlap. For example, in the financial services, I could get information from Nasdaq.com. NYSE.com, OTC, 
these are the multiple, you know, uh, there are three major markets in the US, right? <coughs> Each market has their own website. They list all the stocks that they have, that they trade. I can get information on all of them. There are roughly 5,000 or so publicly traded, 6,000 publicly traded stocks. Not all of them are traded at one, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, one trading house or uh, one uh, exchange. There are three major exchanges. So I'll go to all of them to combine information about the entire stock, you know, public stock market, publicly traded company part of the stock market, and then of course there are privately traded companies also, or private companies also. Anyway, so you, that is how you got the information. In the case, in, in case of Google, how they seem to have started, of course it's a conjecture, right? They are not published as far as I know in all the details, but we know something like they started with three bays. Then we know that they uh, develop other tools to get information. They could be, they are big company, they could be getting uh, structured sources also. Right? There's no reason why they could not use UMLS. So probably they have that, I'm guessing it. But they, uh, Freeways was, uh, you know, the MetaWeb is a company that had few people working for it and they were doing it largely manually. So, um, uh, anyway, uh, and, and then now uh, the world, they are trying, it seems like they have learned from. Uh, well, there are other, uh, you know, big um, uh, academic projects. Know It All is one example. There's a project at Washington, project, project at uh, CMU, and so on and so forth. They've been, uh, basically they will uh, do open source extraction is what they call it. Or open web extraction rather. So they will try to find facts from any, you know, they will basically consume any web page and then see is there a fact. Can, is there a fact? And there are techniques like if multiple people say the same thing, that means that I will have more confidence in that particular fact. Am I right? Yes. Other example would be that um, if <coughs> I had believed something to be a fact, but recently I get a different information, you know, then it is possible something might have changed. For example, a player might have been traded. So the team may have changed, right? So there are these techniques that you you develop, right? And the, um, uh, but then in that case, because you are trying to do automatically, you would keep uh, your you know your believability or how much confidence you have that that is true, based on variety of things. Everybody in the world has said the same thing. For example, a person was Mahatma Gandhi was born on. October 2, everybody says just the same thing. Well, then probably that is the thing. Right? And you will have very high confidence 99% or 99% right? But there will be other things where there are discrepancies. Okay? For example, Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel, another major political figure, he was, he did not know when he was born. And he basically uh, you know, dreamt up, uh, you know, when he had to fill out a form about, for schooling, when the birth date, he just put some na date. So, when you try to now get information about it, most people would still take that date, that, uh, but you will find also somewhere some uncertainty that, you know, unknown. Some people might have actually known that indeed that date he has given is not the real date, and that is unknown. Now you have two different facts coming from uh, different sources, right? Majority of saying this, you know, uh, uh, assumed um, uh, birth date, and others would have said so. Then that would give you less confidence, right? And that would be it. Anyway, so you have this knowledge base, and um, uh, and then what happens here is that you have to do disintegration. That this is the irrelevant part to this project. So the point is that um, spice is it in this context or that context? So what happens here is that remember. I have this knowledge base has uh, music and uh, movie. So Moderna can be music or movie. Tiger Woods can be in uh, uh, in golf, and he can also be in business person or a person a marketing uh, in terms of advertisement. He is a major you know brand ambassador, so he will be there too, right? So which context is being used? They be present here. This guy is trying to figure out which context it is presented in so that I can know for sure the spices for in a, in a, you know in, in the cooking and drink, you know that drinking context or in a drug context and abuse context right 
So now, that for that, what, what do you do? What can you do? And this is the thing that I wanted this team to understand. So, okay. So we used nine um, classifier, nine classifiers. Okay, uh, and you can see the classifiers are uh, here: Asian, <coughs> hidden macro model. Right, and you can see here these are all variants of vision, and then you see KB knowledge based classifier. And then how they contribute to the um, you know accurate classification. So you can see some of the classifiers had very little accuracy. And in fact, the point here is that again, look, statistical techniques um, it will some will do better in some case, some other will do better in other case. You have many different types of text. You have, uh, in this case, we were not using social media text. We were talking about a t traditional web page, like thousand word, uh, you know, textual description, right? So, and it will be properly written in English, right? And um, uh, uh, what, it compared that with a blog, compared that with a uh, Twitter uh, thing, they all would have different performance and pro pluses and minuses. So it's not an easy thing. As you can see, some of them are very low, but the highest one, very interesting. <coughs> Is this KB? To my knowledge, and I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, we were the first or among the very first to ever use an ontology in the context of classification problem. Now, it will of course depend upon how complete your ontology is. You might have word, and I have not, I don't have that word or term or concept in my ontology, it has no value. It will not give anything. So it's coverage would be a very important thing, right? So it's just not going to always, but in the case there is a match in the ontology, this, that is much high um, quality um, indication of what the person could be. Particularly when I say um, uh, uh, Augusta National and Tiger Woods, that are in the same piece of content within the same paragraph, the same sentence, same tweet, then I'm sure this Tiger Wood is in the context of um, uh, golf. When I see Moderna and uh, Abita, and if my knowledge has base has in the movie, Moderna was an actress in Abita movie, then I know Moderna here is in the context of uh, movie, and not music, even though Moderna will be mentioned a lot more times in the music context. She's much better known and much more prolific musician than an, you know, an, an actress. But in this context, I would have much higher uh, you know, uh, uh, belief that indeed this, in this context it is this. So what I was going to get to this team is, see if you can use ontology. They're talking about using classifiers. Yes, these are all classifiers. And yet, there is this classifier that gave the best uh, performance. Just while I admit it, I will show you some interesting thing here. <coughs> so, here is a, uh, a text. So, this is a typical, you know, this is a um, uh, uh, this is a uh, typical financial uh, news uh, article or blog or whatever, right? You go into uh, CNN money, in this, those days we had CNN money. Money was a part of CNN, right? So today also I think you can find the CNN financial site or something, some site. And so this is a, uh, you know, uh, I, in August that, that time, that day, that time, that day, Dow above 9,000, right? And here is a piece of text. Now see what is happening. The system is able to annotate all these different things. Not only that Hewlett Packard, and you see I have give annotation, that is a company. HPQ is a stock symbol. Only for next few more, next some time. This will be uh, two separate symbols very soon, right? Europe is a continent, Middle is a region, Africa is a continent. This text tells you by the way, all the things we already had in the knowledge base in year 2000 or 2001. So look, that is the date, 2002 year. 
we had our, our ontology or knowledge graph or whatever you call it had modeled all these concepts as you see a lot more so uh, uh, you see here software is a technology category so you can see here financial part of the ontology geographic part of the ontology um, you know industry classification that part of ontology right this is a company stock symbol you can also even see modeling of relationship we are talking about relationship the importance of that right that oracle competes with microsoft which can be exploited in a further understanding right so these are all the examples of semantic annotation now you understand that the standards and poor's 500 index is a financial index that whole thing by the way why you could do this uh, why, how can you do this kind of phrase extraction what kind of thing will get you that kind of stuff I'm, i i i use that word phrase extraction hidden markov model base you know think can help you identify these <coughs> phrases like that which are concepts there are two things that help one is a uh, one is a technique that uh, does typically these are windowing when you do like text processing they are windowing techniques right how long should the window 1 2 3 4 5 6 words that's pretty long you know google had uh, published um, and microsoft also probably had uh, published n grams we seldom go beyond 5 ever right so um one sim a very straight forward technique would be to have n gram so uh, companies like google and microsoft and uh, all these major companies because they have processed so much of the data on the web they will have rather high quality n grams all the occurrences of you know n is number right 5 gram 4 gram 3 gram right number of of these are massive numbers right all the possibilities that they occurred in and if one of them is match <coughs> it may be significant maybe but there is a big difference between this as a lexical concept that this is a phrase to a semantic concept that it means a financial index exactly what it means and what 500 stocks are part of s&p 500 when you get got to the semantic level you can say what 500 stocks uh, 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 you know makes up this index until then you can't huge difference do you see syntax structure semantics and grammar is a structure just say the words they go words syntax where it occurs is structure and semantics is what it means once you are at the semantic level i have a lot of other information knowledge i can apply i can apply the fact this is competes where do you get in a syntactical world that competes you can very proud of the work we did now even now most people don't do this almost uh, you know hardly anyone as is this level then there were other things while i did so we our knowledge base this are uh, this is a snapshot of our knowledge base for oracle right now i would know that if um, if i come across a word just uh, lorenz uh uh elison and typically larry elison so i would have of course i'm not sure the whole thing i would have uh, you know a synonym larry elison because typically it would be larry elison not lawrence elison in most of the text right so when i get larry elis elison my system understands that he is the ceo of this company this it knows role with relationship of you know ceo of a company that knowledge you see the point here is to ask your your software you know when you write a software and you try to process some data at what point of time you can reach under the software reach is the understanding of these things how uh uh with how easily would this relationship will be formed in your brain 
extremely easy because you know that companies have CEO. Right? Things of that nature. You, you will apply that without any afford and conscious thing. How would software be made to do that? Right? So very fundamental, you know, this is a big difference between uh, uh, this, this is, you know, some of us and I, you know, I've been always more intrigued by uh, having the semantic web solutions, semantic solutions using the knowledge and ontology um, a lot more than, you know, a lot of other efforts. And I try to make that point in my blog also, if you, if you look at it deeply. Um, uh, you know, that this, was, this is important. You, you, would you find exactly this kind of stuff in the 2001 article? Uh, in its very web, that's something everybody should read here, right? The Badesli and uh, you know uh, Asila, uh, uh, and Handler and Asila article. So see that. Try to understand that and see the importance of what value this gives. The, I explained you the knowledge base uh, part of the classifier, right? Yes. What about extrapolation? Like if you see Oracle and Ellison huh. to say that this was this is probably the CEO. Yes, that is exactly what happens. So uh, when I um, suppose I found um, in a uh, uh, text mention of Larry Ellison, then suppose I search for give me all the articles. This article uh, we are talking about the article that occurred on August 22, 2002, right? Okay, or so whatever that was. August was yeah, I think it was August. So the question is that suppose I ask the question, tell me. All the articles about Oracle that has occurred today, and assume that that article or happens to be <coughs> on a financial service site or just a little paragraph or some news only mentions Larry Ellison. Our search engine would show that to be a relevant article. Not the you know in, you know we had a ranking system. So the, you remember uh, one of the uh, uh, search result uh, I was showing you with, uh, you know, Moderna example and I made the comment that we have ranking system. If, Moder uh, if uh, Oracle and Larry Ellison both showed up in the text, then I will rank it higher because I have much higher affinity and I am not uh, making inference. But if, um, and then I would rank, um, an uh, article, you ask for Oracle, only Larry mentioned, and Ellison is mentioned, I will show that, and then I will ask, I will show all the syntactic matches, match of an IR search engine kind of thing. The way, uh, you know, uh, Google and Yahoo and, uh, you know, Microsoft search engines were there in the early parts of 2000s, that they were syntactic, they didn't have semantics at that point of time. Right? Original Excite search engine, Altai search engine, they were all syntactic uh, engines. They had TFIDF base, you know, it's a fundamental thing. They had some improvement, it was statistical, purely. So that would be our third thing. So when we understood the concept, and when that concept actually occurred, that would be the first category, where we made an inference, second category, second sets of results, and when, we, and the rest are all syntactic matches. So, we ask for Moderna in a music context. I'll show you only those I know where Moderna is mentioned in music context. Followed by, I'll show you where Moderna I know occurs. And followed by any use of word Moderna as in religious artifact and any other things. With syntactic variant even. Right? All right. Next, so, so you guys have to discuss anything? Uh, well, uh, no, this part now I know, we know that actually this part we would have uh, finalized it with the same way with the, our group, maybe Kawan or Sanjay, or by same we reached that because still we did not uh, officially start this project. So this is what I just wanted uh, if somebody has drug, e drug trends, uh, we will get, let's say, for example, one key cannabis, and from here we collect 10,000, or let's say, for example, for testing 10,000, 10, then here, what the model we uh, 
we try to get the best selection and from the model here we will uh, classify so by uh, referring to the cannabis is it referring to cannabis or not but here according to your explanation so uh, we should I, have this I, knowledge I, of i think this is not being very effective well, i i sense that uh, you have something in your mind yeah it's not coming out as well for the class as a whole they would have limited i even have some understanding of e-drug trends not everybody has that and now you are saying something that okay. so let me okay. give you uh, homework to go back and uh, come back with something much better between the three of you i expect a lot more abilities than you okay and read these kind of things carefully and understand them and 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 and, 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 and i think there should be something a lot more okay. all right next anybody else or we, why don't we go to the uh, uh, who is going to present the uh, talk on uh, social go ahead. You can pause it. I've adapted from last semester's uh, version of this course. And the pre original presentation is by Curtis Glenvang and Pramod Kaneru. And today we will go over a uh, variety of topics, evolution of social data, differences between Web 2.0 and 3.0. won't touch on that too much since we've already covered that, most of that. Some challenges because of the current evolution and how we interpret how social data is viewed and interpreted. Uh, the na nature of social media, including advantages di and disadvantages, semantics regarding social media, and then take a look at a couple of apps that are based on semantic social web. So, uh, evolution of the web, uh, we're all pretty familiar with that, I believe. Uh, web 1.0, Web 2.0, basically introduced the concept of uh, <coughs> user-generated content, which got a lot more a lot more content on the web to begin with. So over time, this, this has become sort of a big data issue, especially when you want to focus on the semantics of the content that each and every user puts out there. And that's the focus of Web 3.0, is semantics of that content. And basically the people, the connections between people, their various uh, behaviors, their culture, and even events that happen surrounding each person, and other things related to those events. So Web 3.0, uh, some tools that we can use. So uh, I just want you to be careful. Um, you know, Web 3.0, um, some people have tried you know, use uh, Web 3.0 as a variant for semantic web. At least in my book uh, that you guys have as a reference. Um, <clears throat> all the things that are happening, um, cement, you know, Web 2.0 was really exemplified by the success of MySpace and uh, Facebook and Twitter. But what has then ha been happening is uh, uh, proliferate, you know, a lot more other kinds of data that have been coming in, the Internet of Things and sensor data and all that. So to me, Web 3.0 includes all the different forms of data, not just um, uh, semantic web. Uh, uh, there may be other ways of uh, making great sense out of big data and that still is part of Web 3.0. So I use Web 3.0 as a uh, superset of uh, semantic web. Those semantic web techniques, uh, we, uh, you know, some of us have been hoping would be a lot more prevalent than if they have been. Uh, so it's just semantic web is not just Web 3.0. Okay? At least if you call Web 3.0 as a current era of web. Era yeah. Web. And um, so some tools that we can use to aid in the, the semantics are, uh, as we all know, ontologies and knowledge bases, and um, all familiar with the document level metadata that we can be used as well. And th with these tools at our disposal, we can better organize and analyze the content 
that comes from social media and other sources. So taking a look at the nature of social data and the challenges of user-generated content, uh, the ubiquity of user-generated content is huge. Not only, as I said, is it a issue of big data, as you can see, I won't go through all of that, but data is generated by uh, by like by the petabytes of millions of tweets per day, billions of minutes spent on Facebook. So you can just imagine what kind of content <coughs> is produced through all these social outlets. And that is a challenge that, uh, that arises when we try to organize and analyze this data. And what comes with social, uh, data, what comes with social data is the issue of how informal most of this data is. You, you, go, you go on Twitter, you go on Facebook, uh, blogs, a lot of the, this content is not using proper English or is using formal punctuation or is slang or is using slang. And then there's also the uh, essence of creativity. It's like in this example here, for example, BP oil spill or oil hashtag spill and then some more creativity spelling BP as capital B, capital P, E, E, and then so on and so forth. So analyzing all this data and making those comparisons is where some of these semantics can come into play. And then focusing a little more on Twitter is uh, you're limited to only 140 characters, which makes things, can make things even more difficult because there may not be all the details or context that you need to make those decisions. So with all these disadvantages, what is all of this good for? Well, if we can analyze this data and identify <coughs> entities and events and relationships from this data, then we can uh, move forward with a variety of different applications. And for example, this is a tweet regarding uh, I uh, believe a bombing in Egypt from a while back, a couple of years ago, if I recall correctly. And this information can be used in applications for analysis such as Twitteris or like uh, responding to like natural disasters or other world events. And then there's the wisdom of crowdsourcing where you can generally view a consensus of what the population thinks on certain topics. For example, here is the uh, 2012 election, and you can see data over time over which candidate users prefer. That's an, uh, another positive. And then citizen sensing, we've talked about uh, use of uh, uh, sensor web and in a way, social media can be its own sensor, or people can be sensors themselves in the realm of social data. And that says people act as sensors in the world by reporting their collected data onto networks. And then that provides us the thematic, spatial, and temporal data, which then provides us with situation awareness as you. Um, Again, spatial, thematic, temporal data, as well as some other environmental elements, such, for example, say, uh, weather, temperature, not necessarily quite as accurate as if you had an actual sensor, but someone could easily tweet something about a blizzard or uh, very cold temperatures in a certain area, and combining that with other data, you can extract information and knowledge from that. And then here's... So, so, so do you understand this example in detail? What happened? This, this example? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's... Uh, or somewhat, I don't understand all the uh, various 
key like key co points from each for, from from each. Yeah, explain what you want, then I'll explain more. Okay, so uh, right right here you have your the uh, it's hard to see the tweets or the yeah the, the tweets and then um, it's anal it is an these tweets are analyzed. Um, and it, and these are extracted from them, and in this case, using DBpedia uh, to match up and uh, annotate those entities to create uh, semantic models, and then uh, spatial analysis based on uh, based on address two place mapper. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I Assume, I made the assume, assumption that it is uh, get, it's getting geolocation or like latitude, longitude, and then spatial analysis is taking place on that information. And then based on that, uh, the what, the thematic analysis, is then taking place. Uh, no, let me explain that. So okay. did, did you by any chance look at that, uh, did you go through that blog item? Yes, I, I had issues getting that link working. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, I think you should uh, make sure that you can get that. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, and this is, I think, rather important for at least my uh, students or those who are doing thesis with me. It kind of gives you really, a, it gives you an excellent example and demonstration of how, at least my research originates. I mean, the, my approach to research is often done this way. This is a slide based on something that happened between November 26 and November 28, 2008, right? Mm -hmm. So some of you guys know, mm -hmm. right? Others who don't know uh, uh, should know that that is the time when the terrorists from Pakistan struck Mumbai. They held the city at bay for three days. Mm -hmm. Um, there were, I think, uh, what nine or ten, ten, um, uh, you know, terrorists, and uh, I think 172 people were killed or something like that. Yes. And they stuck nine different places. Now, uh, this is an actual uh, image from Flickr. So uh, there was a guy um, who, uh, I think, a student of Indian origin, who was a, stu a student at Columbia. And he was visiting um, Mumbai at that point, and he, he think of you know as a citizen photojournalist. So he basically, uh, after the terrorists uh, did what they they did, he moved uh, you know around and tried to capture as much as he could with with his cell phone. So he would take this photograph and upload on Flickr. So there was a stream of image data. At the same time, there were stream of tweets. 2008. When was Twitter started? No, your C2 is already in 2008, so obviously it started before that. Alright, homework guys, come on. This is something you got to know, okay? So I expect you to know this, okay? I'll ask you in my oral exam. I'm going to have, I think I might try to have oral exam in the future. That's, that's my way of it. And um, uh, one of the first example, you know, it is an important thing. Uh, I remember how Twitter got first known and how I suddenly thought I should pay attention. This was before this time. And it was a journalist was captured uh, and was being taken to the jail in Egypt. And he tweeted. That he had been, uh, he had been uh, arrested, not captured, arrested, and being taken to jail. His tweets were seen by his friends, and they did all the things and brought all the political pressure from the government and all that, and the guy was released. <laughs> right? So this is a, in my memory, this was the first significance, first thing that gave me significance of Twitter. So I was aware of Twitter, and when this happened. Yeah, since I was born in India, clearly a matter of interest and concern, I started seeing Twitter. And the messages were coming at fast and furious, coming at such a rate 
that you, you know, you can look at each other's message, but how do you get a sense of actually what is happening? The word is situational awareness. How do you understand what is happening? An individual tweet only gives you a piece of data, an observation. And I coined the term there, this is a term I coined in 2008, citizen sensing. Citizens acting as a sensor. The other terms for that also, some other people have used the word participatory sensing also. Anyway, so, you know, the common man acts as a sensor, just like you have, you know, physical sensors in the Internet of Things. I talked about uh, physical, it's a citizen sensing, social sensing of sorts. And the data was coming so fast that there is no way to get a sense and that you can do, if you do search, there will be so much results. You won't know what to do search on because you don't know exactly what is happening. Right? So, but basically, the terrorists stuck nine places over these three days. On, they started with one, part, you know, somewhere there and they made, you know, they hit a one hotel and the restaurant and um, then they hit this thing called Nariman House. It's where, I think, the years in Nariman House. They hit Nariman House. This is, a, uh, I think, a, 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 a place <coughs> where, that, that, that had, uh, was um, uh, Jewish um, establishment. establishment was there, there, okay? And clearly that would get a lot of attention in the U.S. Um, the, um, and, and then they went down to other places and finally they went to Taj uh, Hotel, the burning uh, in the thing of that, some of you might have seen. Now, so what happens? They start nine places. So you will call this the whole thing as a situation in which there are nine events in a day. How do you describe event in a simple way? There are many, many aspects of describing an event. So it's not a simple thing. But the fundamental thing about event is when it occurred, <coughs> where it occurred, and what happened. That's the fundamental thing, right? So that is partial temporal thematic. Time, space, and thing. That's fundamental thing. So, and as this happened, um, that is the day. Uh, it happened 26, and we were watching 26 most of the day. I came here 27th, and I told my then student, his name is uh, uh, Karthik Gomodan. I said, Karthik, capture those tweets. We are going to do something about it. We go, you know, this this is a research problem, also. I, you know, and then I also saw the same next day, day there were pe smart people out there who blogged saying, you know, um, this, they noticed that journalism and media changed forever. Because much of the news, this was happening, this was happening, that this uh, people are here, shot was fired, the first thing were reported on social media. Twitter and then this. Right? And maybe after a while, there will be a, a you know, report on newspaper or TV stations. They were all following social media. In 2009, I remember CNN saying, we have no reporter on the ground, but the Twitter report says what's happening in Iran election 2009. <laughs> right? So um, it was clear to me also that this is you know, changing the media forever. <coughs> And um, this is how the research started. Now let's look at a little bit more in the detail. So, what happened is that the images, when they are uploaded by um, uh, the uh, by 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 a mobile phone, which has enabled a location tracking, would have metadata because, uh, or even uh, otherwise, they might have metadata because um, you know, exif metadata <coughs> may include that, may or may not. Okay? And I can reverse geocode to get an address. So this is a photograph, let's say near somewhere, and then I could say, oh, this is 18 Hormuzi Street, right? That is, that is an address in Mumbai. Now, um, I would have, uh, so this is Vividpedia, that would give you semantic model, meaning some sort of background knowledge, right? So because this will have, there is a there is an entry for this, or there is an entry for income or uh, income tax office on uh, you know on, on one of the page maybe I don't even know our Mumbai page or whatever on uh, on 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 Wikipedia so it is also an, uh, an object in Wikipedia right 
So, uh, and the address will be there. So I can say what is nearby. Is this, what is the major landmark near which this <coughs> photo is coming from? What is a major landmark from which this tweet is coming from? Right? And if that they are nearby, then what happens? Suppose this tweet only uses the word Nariman. Nariman. It may not even use Nariman house for that matter. Because people in tweet, you know, the 140 character, they decide what, you know, the context. But because of then, what does that Nariman mean? For a software, again, human don't understand it much more. They have context. But how does a software understand this is this Nariman is the same as that Nariman house? How do we understand that? So now you saw that I had knowledge, I had proximity information. What is a nearby landmark? And now I could start to say, ah, that is Nariman house. That Nariman is Nariman house, as an example. A, from the description, this is a Jewish house of worship or what, you know, what, whatever other purpose that, you know, uh, Jewish combination, combination, combination was using it for. Right? So, and, and there is, so, so you had, you know, the spatial, obviously, I mentioned time, of course, was there, and, 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 you know, other thematic information. Right? So this is what this whole thing is about. And this is how Twitter, Twitter started and it became spatio-temporal thematic was the first of the dimensions of Twitter, uh, you know, analysis that we did on social, uh, on Twitter data. Then came the second dimension. So, uh, the paper on that was, I believe, published in 2009, because this is 2008, right? So, I think 2009, I think we have paper. Then, then that is, we call Twitter's version 1. Then, our focus moved to People content network. So starting to say, who is this guy posting this? How many people who are posting this are Jews? As an example, suppose I want to know this. As an example, or how many people are posting uh, who are from this general area, and who are simply making? You know, I would be concerned. I can also post about this thing in Europe. Uh, in U I'm in US, and I can post about it. I'm concerned about it. Right? But I want to, there is a value to know, this is a, how do I know whether some tweet here is a, an eyewitness tweet or a tweet about an opinion, expression of concern. So they, that includes people, understanding who the person is, what is the background, he, you know, is, he, is that person a journalist, is that person a politician, that gives you a very important thing. Content is again the same as theme in a way, I didn't have... You know, but basically trying to understand, you know, better entity extraction and distribution, and network. Who is influencing? How does the message dissipate? So network, you know, based analysis of social media is a very old topic, and a lot of people have done a lot more work than we have. But combination thereof was something we noticed, and we had a paper in World Wide Web 2011 on that area. People content network. So uh, Hemant did an analysis of various kind of events. Short term event, long term event, local event. For example, there were a lot of uh, the Ohio uh, State Fair had a lot of discussion of butter cow or something like that. You know, a cow, and you know, they, 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 you know, they, they, would, uh, they would have a lot of cows in this fair and uh, there was something about it, right? Oh, there was a cow that was made out of butter. So there was a lot of discussion. So there, there's that kind of event versus this kind of event that lasted for three days versus. Uh, even, uh, you know, broader, even bigger mass case thing like Ebola that is happening now, a situation, right? So there are both big and short, small, short and long events, uh, local and global events, and so he analyzed all of them. And then he looked at uh, the, these additional dimensions, people continue to work. And then that became Twitter's version 2. And then Twitter's version 3 was when we started to include sentiment and emotion. That work still continues with regards to the focus on subjectivity now. Right? Particularly intention is a very powerful aspect of social media analysis. Do you intend to buy? Are you seeking information? Are you giving information? That kind of stuff, right? 
uh, then we had a, he did analysis of suicide notes and to try to figure out mm -hmm. is there is this person exhibiting an intent to commit suicide is the person can from, from can from suicide notes i predict that the person might has a high chance of doing suicide and we made inter, you know there was an interesting analysis um, uh, and and uh, benbo and lu published a paper on that uh, that said when people are close to committing suicide they don't uh, uh, express anger or um, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, sadness or all these things. Typically, what they end up doing is to talk about um, uh, give they give instructions. They say, you know, be happy after I'm gone, or they, they you know say, you know, sell my car to pay for my you know whatever. So this kind of stuff that happens. Very inter you know these are the interesting things, right? So from analysis. Anyway, so that is that became version three, and then we have this treatise version C, which is what. Jeremy is working on, Ellen is working on, and what these guys are using. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, the first step towards uh, semantic social web is marking up or annotating the uh, user generated content. But, they're, but annotating this kind of content is not necessarily the same as annotating traditional content. Does anybody know why this is? Three structures? Uh, yeah, it's a, one, one thing, even though so a lot of traditional content can be unstructured as well. But uh, the, big, the big things I actually already touched on back here. The uh, syntax. The syntax. Yeah. The way people pronounce B and yeah, all those yeah. things. The abbreviations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, all the possibilities of uh, expression. Express. Yeah. Expressions and uh, the slang, the span, the off-topic. Informal. Right. The, right. Yeah. So, uh, the role of semantics in social media. Ontologies play a <coughs> role, and often, well, they are the common reference models for inferring semantics behind the user-generated content, as well as uh, with the assistance of natural language processing. So here's an example of uh, disambiguation. You have a phrase, Lily, I loved your Cheryl, Tweety, Do, Heart, Amy. So en entities found via natural language processing are Lily, Cheryl, Tweety, and Amy. But there's some disambigu disambiguity with Amy. That is Amy referring to the artist Amy Winehouse, or just Anne Amy. So, using music brains, uh, Lily Allen has been identified, and Cheryl Tweedy, is re via the relationship of Lily Allen, is a music track by Lily Allen. So, now we need to disambiguate between Amy or Amy Winehouse, the artist. So here is Amy Winehouse on Music Brains, and you can see some tags. Uh, British, Death by Overdose, English, I Heard Love is Blind, Jazz and Blues. Here's Lily Allen. I won't go through all of those, but... And then, compare with, with those relationships, we, you can disambiguate that Amy is not, or the Amy that is being referred to in the previous phrase is not Amy Winehouse, the artist. So identifying entities, Lil Smile, another example, Lil Smile So Rocks, syntactic parse gives us the result that it is a verb, which that smile is a verb which is not 
in this context, as you can tell. If we check the knowledge base, you can see that Smile is actually a track by the artist Lily Allen. And another similar example, Steve says all zunes and one cares must go at prices permanently slashed. Via the context of that phrase, you, and inferring from those relationships, you can then uh, recognize that Steve is actually Steve Ballmer, CEO of Microsoft. Another, another problem is off-topic noise. Uh, this example uh, regarding uh, someone needing help with Sony Vegas Pro, <coughs> and then they go on to say, sort of related to the topic, that they have a video project due tomorrow, and then they just kind of keep rambling on and on and on, and then mention food poisoning from eggs. At that point, they are completely off-topic, to off but it's completely irrelevant to the actual content that we want to focus on. Sony Vegas Pro 8. And knowledge base, didn't get in too much. Uh, basically, with, just, knowledge base clearly tells us that uh, none of the off topic keywords are relevant to the Sony Vegas Pro, which pretty much everything after that first sentence is unnecessary. And this can actually be used in the form of advertisement, and that's kind of small to see, but it says the topic up here, Illustrator CS3, and the main post, I need, to, I need this in order to familiarize myself with, with it. Prior to beginning grad school, my master's will be in graphic design. And then you see some advertisement here, advertisements here about master's degree, University of Phoenix, but really, the main, top, main topic of this post is Illustrator CS3. So then, down here, advertisements are generated after the off-topic keywords are eliminated. So then you have advertisements about Illustrator CS3, tutorials on Illustrator CS3, Adobe CS3, Premium, buy, uh, as a, and buying the actual software. And then analyzing user comments, uh, again, smile, or smile by Lily Allen rocks. Using music brains, you can infer that smile is a track by the artist Lily Allen. And then here's where sentiments come in. Using sentiment annotator, you, then you can infer that the term rocks is a positive sentiment. <coughs> and then by observing popular trends <coughs> over time, and the patterns that stand out in the user activity of such online communities, it was possible to forecast what was going to be possible tomorrow. Meaning, using the, these sentiments and the content that is provided to us through the user-generated content, we can make predictions about what, like that said, what will be popular in the future. And. Uh, you, did you want to share? No, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, quickly, in the essence of time, I'll go quickly through some apps that apps that focus on or based on semantic social web. Uh, this example, Zamanta, brings useful content to bloggers, connects authors to their peers, publishers, and marketers. The key component. The API resolves text into strongly identified entities and then queries free base for detailed information about the peoples, places, and movies. And there's just a small little example there. Not very detailed. Uh, BBC Sound Index is uh, real time analytics of music popularity using data from a variety of social networks. And essentially, what this is about is it's uh, one of the core components of this is creating a music charts via what users from various social networks feel about these particular songs. And, um, and also, I believe sentiments come into play, and that helps 
with the rankings for these various music or various tracks and artists. And Twitteris, which uh, we're all pretty familiar with. Tool extracting social signals for sense making, which uses the spatial, temporal, thematic metadata extracted from observations, this being uh, users on social networks, mainly being, or that being Twitter. Summarize the semantic content to create mashups for visualizing the spatial, temporal, thematic aspects and to provide foundation for exploring other news and information sources. So with that, we capture uh, semantics along the spatial, temporal, thematic direction, and also user intentions and their sentiments towards those specific events. And networking behavior, and uh, there's the, there, right here is the architecture of Twitteris, which go on from there. And um, search and explore tab, basically this is an example of how using background knowledge the system is able to answer complex queries such as those two right there. And here's a quick walkthrough. You have a tweet and then the entity swatter uh, via DBpedia extracts Entity 1, which is either person, place, or thing. Entity 2, person, place, or thing. Converts it, converts each entity into already of triples. And then, uh, on background knowledge, various URIs. <coughs> and then, combining both of these, and then using Sparkle to query, and get information about those particular entities. Uh, so, conclusion, there is a great potential in the integration of social web and semantic web where objects are treated as first-class citizens, making it easier to search, integrate, and exploit the information surrounding them. Here's just a few uh, companies. And basically what that is kind of highlighting and showcasing is the goal here is for everybody and everything to be interconnected with semantics behind them so that we can extract uh, meaningful information from, from uh, all, of the, all of this massive big data user generated content out there, whether it's from companies, from me, from you, from anybody. Any any questions? Any comments?